What a great song, I believe. Uh, this next uh, man that's getting ready to come out on the stage has made a huge mark in music and history in music. God has really blessed his life, and he's got a great story. And we are very honored that Ken Mansfield is with us tonight. Would you make Ken Mansfield welcome tonight to the stage? Brother Ken. Welcome. My pleasure. <laughs> Thank you so, so very much for being here. Totally my pleasure. Really, this is exciting. I was going over uh, all that you have been involved <laughs> in. All in I've your, been through. <laughs> well, I don't want to say through, okay. but, but been involved in. Yeah. And it has, I, I was just floored. I, I couldn't believe that you were going to come and be with us tonight. Uh, now, it says, longtime recording executive uh, and producer, served as U.S. manager of the Beatles. Yes. Yeah, little Happy band. Records. You know. Just a small. <laughs> Let, let's do this again. Make welcome Ken Mansfield. <laughs> Woo! And he's with us tonight. It's, so that is amazing. You know, when I worked with a band, uh, I mean, I'd worked with a lot of bands and stuff, and they'd become famous and go away. And I used to tell Ringo, I'd say, I can't wait for this Beatles thing to go over so you and I can just hang out for a while, you know? <laughs> to go away. And like 30 years later, we still can't go in a restaurant or something without everybody going crazy, you know, or 40 years later, whatever it was, you know? That is amazing. Yeah. That is amazing. What's one of the fondest memories that you have uh, working with the Beatles? Well, I think, you know, I was in the music business for 30 years, and there's a lot of highlights, but I was on the roof with the Beatles the last time that they... Uh, did their last concert, which is one of the most historical moments in rock and roll. Yeah. It was just like a dozen of us up there. And to sit up there and, and to be a part, an inner part of the whole thing, and, and uh, they hadn't performed for I forget how many years, and they were on the verge of breaking up, and everything was so crazy at Apple in London then. We were on top of a five-story building, January 29th, downtown London, filming this thing for the Let It Be film. It was freezing up there. And they came out and they start uh, playing the songs and stuff. And they've been everybody was fighting with each other, and the man, everything was just a mess. It was like a nightmare. And all of a sudden they started playing. And if you look at the film and let it be, you'll see Paul and John look over each other, and it's like, yeah, we've been together a long time, and we've been through a lot, and we're close, and this is what we are as a good band. And when you watch that. Yeah. It's just special. But those of us that were there, uh, we didn't realize that they were going to break up. We didn't realize this was a special moment. We were just doing our job, you know. And we walked off the roof and down into our offices and went, wait a minute, something, something happened here. Yeah. And we didn't talk about it for 30 or 40 years. Nobody just even talked about it. And uh, I don't know. It's like those of us that were there were like two guys in a foxhole. We're like bonded together forever, you know. Yeah. Special moment. So not only <laughs> with uh, the Beatles, but yeah. also uh, in the 70s, uh, Waylon Jennings, yeah. you kind of started the yeah. outlaw yeah. of country music with Waylon and... Waylon, Willie and the Boys, Tom yeah. Paul, Jesse Coulter. Uh, the Beatles... <laughs> mm -hmm. That's amazing. <laughs> And the Beatles, you know, being with the Beatles was incredible, but they were already famous. But the outlaw movement is something we did from ground up. Created. Like, basically, Waylon was playing in bars with, you know, a screen so they couldn't throw the beer bottles at you. Right. And we went from that to, like, he you know, headlining major concerts. And uh, I hit with Jesse Coulter, a record called I'm Not Lisa, if you ever heard yeah. that. Yeah. And um, I produced that. And then simultaneously, I produced Waylon's Are You Ready for the Country album, which was the number one country album of the year. So all of a sudden, these two, this husband and wife, they just go from like, now I'm with the, somebody like the Beatles again, you know, because everybody's just crazy. So, yeah. So you went from the Beatles to, to country music. Yeah. And then you, now I don't know if this is in sync, but you yeah. had a bout with cancer, is that right? Yeah, I had my first bout um, 
I'd been sick for about two years, and I'm going to speak into a lot of people's lives here because for two years I was misdiagnosed and kept doing new tests and all this kind of stuff, and I was getting worse. And then finally, uh, they hit the right diagnosis. And the reason they'd been missing it is because it was so rare that there was such a small population. Wow. A lot of the oncologists weren't even familiar with it. And so when we found out uh, on that cancer that uh, they told me it was incurable and uh, I had uh, one to three years to live, and it was such a small population that there was no research and just, you know, go home, it's only going to get worse. We went home that night, and I'm talking about being a Christian now and what is the difference when, when I was in the world. We went home that night, and it was Christmas time, and my wife and I just looked at each other and we cried. I went to bed. The next morning I got up, and I felt incredible. And I'm going, wait a minute. I just got some really bad news here, you know. And it was almost like God said to me, hold on here, Hoss, you know, you got some big news yesterday, and so that means I'm going to be in this with you big time. Oh, wow. And just one or two things are going to happen. I'm going to bring you home. Oh, too bad. I have to go to heaven, right? <laughs> or I'm going to glorify me through this. Uh, that was, I was given one to three years in 1996 with that cancer. With that. You know? uh, then, <laughs> go ahead. So, so let's, let, let's back up. I'm, okay. I'm kind of, so this was after you had given your heart to the Lord. Yeah, and, yeah. And your wife yeah. was, a very, uh, was very instrumental in you yeah. surrendering your heart. My wife you. brought me to the Lord, and I, I say that the first person I see every morning when I wake up is the person that saved my life. You know? Wow. <laughs> but, uh, how much time do I have? <laughs> no. I, uh, my life fell apart, and it's very typical in the music business that you start believing your own press releases and you think you're going to go on forever and you're going to make the money forever and the drugs are okay, don't worry about that, you know, you're just good time. And the eventuality is my life totally fell apart. I lost everything. And I'm in L.A. and I can't even get a job now, you know. So I think, well, I'm going to go back to Nashville, Tennessee because I produced the, the outlaw movement. I'll just go back there and pick up where I left off. But this time, I'm going to be crazier. I'm going to do more drugs. I'm going to get more awful. I'm going to be, you know, everything that I, that I did before except because I was do it more. I get off the plane in Nashville. I go to a restaurant, and I meet this lady. And bam, you know, our eyes just locked. And so I did get her number, and I did, uh, we did go out. And now... I have a guru, I'm a stoner, I'm broke, I got a bad, if I'd have put an ad in the paper, no woman in her right mind would have answered the ad, you know. <laughs> she had just spent a full year of deciding that she wanted to press back into the Lord, and so she spent a whole year of not dating or anything like that. We meet in this restaurant, we start dating, and we had a little problem, because uh, I had my guru, and she was just totally sold out for Jesus, and so our conversation was what? She said he was the way, and I said, well, yes, he is a way. He's one of the great ascended masters and a great prophet, and Jesus is a way. She said, no, he's the way. And we couldn't get past this with each other, and it just kept on. And finally, uh, I said, well, look at, you know, uh, let's meet in the middle. I'll change gurus for you if you'll just get off this Jesus thing just a little bit, you know. We must be able to meet in the middle. And she said, there's no middle. He's the way. Oh. So... Now, God had put us together, but we didn't quite realize. We couldn't figure out why we were attracted to each other. Well, so now we're dating for a while, and she's one, she said, I've got to talk to you tonight. And uh, so we get together, and she said, um, I see where we're headed, and uh, I really cannot become unequally yoked, and I have to make a choice between you and Jesus. And she said, I choose Jesus. Amen. Wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Now, she'd been taking me to, uh, she, was trying to, she was trying to witness to me. She was taking me to Christian rock concerts. She was taking me to all the churches in Nashville with the great musicians where she was introducing me to old Paul Stuckey and Rich Mullins, and she was doing all this, you know, and talking and praying over me. But when she, she did that, uh, she walked out her, her, her walk. She had been talking the talk, but she, and she walked it out. And I thought, I know how we felt about each other, and I thought, I want to have something that I'm willing, I would want to have something that I would be willing to give up, something I really cared about for. And uh, that's what brought me to the Lord, was just realizing there was something so precious that she was willing to give up. You know? Wow. So, 
And you saw the realness of it. That's it. Right That's inside it, of yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? So God put us together. Now, and here's what's interesting. So I came out of Her the name room. is Connie. Her name is Connie. Sweet Connie. Yes, yeah, Sweet Connie. And she's worked with the Oak Ridge Boys and all these people. She was the associate director of Hee Haw at the time. Anybody ever heard of Hee Haw? Wow. <laughs> so she was, I was audio and she was visual. I made records and she did TV. But, uh, yeah, God put us together. Now, you, uh, you have written four books. Yeah. The last, uh, the, the, the one that you released this year is right. called Stumbling on Open Ground. Right. And uh, d d where does this come from? It's, you know, it's kind of a between the cracks book. It's kind of a, a raw book. What I did is I went through a second cran cancer, which was brutal. I mean, it was all of a sudden, I mean, here I'd been from through. A second cancer. A second cancer, but the second one wasn't quite so, uh, maybe so nice. The first one wasn't nice, but the second one was just brutal. It was all or nothing, do or die. You know, I went into... Uh, uh, eight and a half weeks every day of the week of heavy radiation and 200 and some hours of chemo and I was down for seven months and not knowing if I'm going to make it and all that. And I wrote this book because the publisher asked me, uh, when you're laying there and your faith is challenged and you're, you know, you're, there's no question that you're going to say, well, you know, God, um, I'm not having a real good time here, you know, yeah. <laughs> and uh, why aren't you healing me and all that. And people get in this dark place and they think, well, I'm a Christian, but I'm questioning God and I don't really don't, I'm mad at God. And they think my faith is weak, you know. And uh, so what are you supposed to do is say, oh, praise you, Lord, I know there's a trial here and, and I'll get through this. But in the back of your mind, you're going, why in the heck is this happening? And, you know, da, da, da. Right. and he knows your thoughts. Yeah. So he wants you to say, hey, I'm not having a good time here, Lord. And what's this all about? And can we do, you know, that's yeah. called prayer. Yeah. He just wants us to talk to him about it. So it's okay to go through these, these times and it's okay to, to question God and talk to him about it, you know. That's the relationship. Yeah, yeah. And so that's what this book is that's about. That's what this book is about. And I, I get pretty real in there about what's going on, you know. Right. So, uh, and, yeah. and that's what we need, though. Yeah, yeah. That, you know, it, it, it's not all yeah. clowns and harps and yep. angels and everything. Yeah. It's it rain is. and hailstorms yeah. and that's right. treacherous that's times, it. cancer, and yeah. losing loved ones. That we need a it's, real... It's not that relationship with Christ. We do. It's not that linear. Oh, you get cancer and then you, you, you get sick for a while and you pray about it and then you get well and you go on your way. It's not that linear because yeah. there's just a lot of flailing around in the rubble and stuff, you know. So there's the book a, is really about doubting a God you don't doubt. It's about, you know, questioning your beliefs on a God that you totally believe in or questioning a God that you know that has all the answers anyway. It's just this dialogue that you can have. That's awesome. But that's what he's there for. The greatest leaders in the in the scripture, though, yeah, did that. Oh, absolutely. Take David. Yeah. Start out being mad and end up praising every psalm. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's Love the that. truth, isn't yeah. it? That is the truth. And then you had a, a, another book, a previous book out called Love God, Cancer. And rock and roll. No, that's the same book. That's the same yeah, book. Yeah, same book. Okay, one before so it's, was well. So it's stumbling on open ground. Love God, cancer, yeah. and rock and roll. Yeah. And so it deals with all of those. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Well, I thought. So I go back. I go back. Sorry. You know, I'm delirious, and I'm going back, and I think, wait, I'm, this is pretty awful right now. So just to protect myself or get some, I would go back to the good times, you know, what right. I thought were good times, and and just try to remember those to kind of carry me through. But it's all about these little things you do, you know, to just get through it and trust God. So, so they can go to your, your website. Yeah, which or is, Amazon. Or, or, right now, that is up. Yeah. You can uh, go up. I know you can't see it, but no. on TV screens, it's up right okay. now. They can go and, and uh, purchase your uh, new book that's out, which yeah. we all need. We all need those uplifting yeah. times and, and yeah. real moments. Hey, he went through that. I'm going through that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Those type of moments. Yeah. And then there was one last thing that I wanted to make mention. So we go from being at the last Beatles concert yeah. on the roof yeah. to the outlaws, Waylon Jennings and yeah. the boys. Right. 
Just a good old boy. Anyway. I tell you uh, what, and the outlaws made the Beatles and the rock bands look like choir boys when it came did? to Oh, boy. <laughs> I tell you. <laughs> There's you your you piece of history, ladies yeah, and gentlemen. You haven't been to a party, man. <laughs> <You know? laughs> that was the deal. Yeah. So, but this is wild. Now, listen to this. He also produced the very first Gaither Homecoming video. Yeah. That was magic. That was magic. <laughs> Do you know, and, and we was talking about this a yeah. little earlier, that was one of the reasons that I even started singing. Yeah, you told me that. That blew me away. You know, it's, a, uh, it's just an honor. And I didn't have a clue. I mean, I didn't have a clue uh, about just what this album was going to do because it started all those arena things and so many people coming to the Lord, you know. Yeah. And I was telling Jason earlier, because I'd done a lot of records and been up for Grammys and awards before, you know, and never won. And so we're standing there listening to the playbacks to, uh, to the Homecoming album. And I think Mark Lowry says, man, we're going to win a Dove and maybe even a Grammy with this record. And I go, oh, you poor deluded child, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't work that way, you know. And we did. And it happened. We did, yeah. And, and then this, this whole arena thing started. Yeah. And we, we even had a camera in there. We were going to shoot this little teeny video with one camera to, to promote the record with. And uh, my wife was there, who was in television, and uh, uh, Mylon's mother, Eva, yeah. Eva Marie, she sits down. What's it? Eva May. Eva May. She sits down at the piano and starts playing, and, and Bill comes over and leaves the piano. He starts singing, and pretty soon one of the stamps come over. And all of a sudden, I turned to my wife, and I said, get with a camera guy and start shooting. And I grab my engine. I said, I want tapes rolling. I don't care what they are, two-track, 24-track. I want tapes and mics up in this room. And uh, that was the, that was the, that was the that video was. that was also got a gold thing or something. And uh, Daryl Harris, the <laughs> it, got, it got Bill Gay through a gold something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, poor Bill. <laughs> poor Bill, poor Bill. <laughs> but I don't know. And uh, so Daryl Harris, the president of Star Song, called me. He said, wait a minute, this is more than a 30 second video. He said, I think we got something here. And uh, yeah. it's the beginning of it. It really was. Yeah. Ken. My pleasure. Thank you so, right. so, so Thank much. You. Thank you. God, God bless you. you. God bless you. Woo Go out <laughs> and get his book. Something on open ground. You need to get his book. Uh, do that. Have we been blessed tonight <laughs> already? Uh, let are. him know one more time. How yeah. about it for Ken Mansfield? All up there. <laughs> I'm excited about this, getting ready to take the stage. <laughs>